This morning on The Dish, Crystal Wilkinson, award-winning author, scholar, and former Kentucky Poet Laureate. In her latest book, part cookbook, part memoir, praise song for the kitchen ghost, she takes readers through the mountains and kitchens of the Appalachian region. I've always felt a power larger than myself while cooking. I learned how to cook by saying nothing. When author Crystal Wilkinson recounts her childhood and her new book, she conjures those from whom she inherited her kitchen culture. So much of the art of cooking lies in the body. I gained knowledge about the spirit of the cooks who came before me, the rhythm and the way they sloshed the greens in the sink, removed a pot seconds before it burned, drew a knife close enough to the finger to hold the vegetable taut but never cut themselves. A kind of electric excitement passed through me when I watched Granny cook. Praise Song for the Kitchen Ghost is a tribute to the ancestors of Indian Creek, Kentucky, but mostly Wilkinson's granny. This was the kitchen ghost. Yes. If not for her dress, she says it may have never been written. Well, it entered into my life when my grandmother passed away and how hard that was, you know, it was so hard, even though I knew how to cook. That first holiday, which was Thanksgiving, and, and thinking about, uh, well, what are we gonna do? You know, how are we gonna do this? I was cooking for my mother and my three children and struggling, breaking down, crying, um, trying to do all the things. You know, my grandmother had seven children. She had 25 grandchildren several great grandchildren, and we would all gather in that little house. Mm. And I got her dress and I hung it up on the back door. And I felt like that at that moment, she was like, okay, girl, you, you can do this. Pray Song is also an ode to Afrolatcha, Wilkinson's term of recognizing the African-American imprint on the culture and food of the Southeastern mountain region known as Appalachia. Chicken and dumplings is my favorite Is dish. it really? Yeah. I like the universality of it. I like the fact that it is one of my comfort foods, and I know that at some point it was a struggle food for my people. We decided to have Crystal teach me how to make it. Then you'll put the chicken in. A dish that formally ended her two decades as a vegetarian, because no matter how hard she tried. Look at me. Look at you. She couldn't replicate a meatless version. It's good. Mm -hmm. Other Appalachian favorites were easier to alter. This is the meatless greens, but you get a little smoky flavor from the liquid smoke. And those aren't just collards, those are... That's a mixture of uh, mustard, kale, and some collards in it too. Gotcha. Is there a difference between black Appalachian food and what we know as Appalachian? I think there's a bigger distinction between Appalachian food and Southern food. Mm. And the foods are different mainly because the terrain is so different. In the deep south, you can have a winter garden. Like you can still grow them collards in the winter. In Appalachia, you got snow, you've got ice. And so there's a bigger um, focus on preservation. The book also honors her family history. Like Grandma Aggie, who was born in 1795 in Virginia, and was brought to Kentucky as an enslaved woman. Grandma Aggie's daughter, Patsy Wright, graces the cover of the book. A child born free in 1818 to a white father, Tarleton Wilkinson. He also deeded property to her mother, as shown in records the family still possesses. Feather bedstead, crocks, and pots and pans and tables and everything that she sort of needed to to set up a household. Clues Wilkinson believes shed light on their relationship. She was the, let's say, common law wife. So there were documents and I was able to find her through census records because he never took a white wife. Because marriage was illegal between whites yes. and blacks. The generations that followed lived off the land, including her beloved grandparents, who took her in as a young girl. I lived an idyllic childhood. You know, I think there's something about being grandparent raised. We were mm -hmm. home a lot. I did a lot of running around and my grandparents would say, yeah, go on. Go on and do what you wanted to do. So 
I think my imagination was instilled from roaming that land. My grandfather had 64 acres of land. 64 acres that provided food for her family's table. There are recipes she claims as her own, like her upside down cornbread. Which my grandmother would not have served, but oh, really? I have uh, innovated a little bit and put um, onion rings on the bottom of the skillet when you bake the cornbread. Um, that is garlicky white beans, uh, also vegetarian. And here you have dressed eggs. My grandmother, being a church woman, didn't often say deviled eggs because you don't want to speak the devil's mm. name. So this is dressed eggs. Dressed. Dressed or deviled, Crystal Wilkinson has lived her granny's wildest dreams. My grandmother always wanted to be um, a teacher and the women in praise song, the men too, but particularly the women, are the reason that I am who I am. A scholar at the University of Kentucky, the state's poet laureate, and for that matter. So you're Appalachian now. I'm Appalachian. <laughs> a woman who knows her way around the kitchen. And so even though the dishes in the book might not be dishes that people are familiar with, I think it'll hearken them back to their own kitchen ghosts and their own traditions. I learned so much from her, especially all about dressed so eggs. If you don't want to call them deviled <laughs> eggs, which is fine, why don't we just call them angelic eggs? Oh, mm. wow. Because they're a little naughty? I don't know. It's you think they're naughty? Well, because you get a little spice, right? From a little spice. She, could, she has a lot of kick in hers, but that and her mint berry lemonade are to die for. So, folks, hope you I get love a little it. taste of Appalachia. You think it's hot? <laughs> You know me, my spice. mouth was full. You, you are good with that. You will too, yours is too. I think it's good. The Dish is sponsored by Oceana Cruises. Your world, your way.